For years, plant breeders have focused on yield, disease resistance, and shelf life because that's what the supply chain demanded. But somewhere along the way, flavor got left behind. One agronomist decided that wasn't good enough. If food starts in the field, why aren't chefs part of the conversation from the beginning? This is the story of what happens when a breeder teams up with the kitchen, not just to grow food, but to grow flavor, creativity, and a whole new way of thinking about what crops can be. Meet Lane Selman, a researcher at Oregon State University. She has a degree in agronomy and another in entomology, and she began her career seeing how new varieties of fruits, vegetables, and grains performed in the field. At 2020 Sea Labs, our motto is never stop growing. So that's the first reason. Uh, the, the next, the other reason is that we understand that the work that we do is in an environment that is constantly changing. A lot of growers are going into precision farming, so they need more information. Our goal is to be able to provide them that information because we understand that their business is tied to their livelihoods. And so any way we can support them to get their business going, um, the long run is that the whole Canadian ag system benefits and then we benefit as well as the lab. I knew what the plant breeders wanted me to evaluate for and what the farmers wanted. So I would go out to all of these different environments, all these different farms. So then we knew, like, is it G or is it E, right? It's like, it's like we can know, know it's the genetics if it's performing well on all these different environments. As she looked at new varieties, she saw a missing ingredient in plant breeding flavor. And I was looking to see, you know, which ones perform the best. But then I thought, well, what about what they taste like? And all the researchers that I worked with, we had our, you know, annual meeting. And I was like, well, we're not really evaluating them for flavor. And that is something that I know is very important for this segment of the marketplace. So she did something unexpected. She brought chefs into the fold to cook up some peppers she'd been looking at. I asked a chef, could you potentially prepare these all? There's like nine different entries that we had. Some were breeding lines, not yet complete and not available commercially yet. So they're in process. And others that were commercial hybrids and open pollinated varieties. And I said, would you be able to prepare these and saute them, roast them, and have them raw so that we can have all these different chefs taste these nine different entries and evaluate them. The experience proved to be an interesting one. I started asking them what they liked and what they didn't like. And so of those nine entries, there was about five of them that they said, all of these taste really great, we really like them. But the one that we really love is this one. And they pointed to it and I asked them why. And they said, because it has very rounded shoulders and has really straight walls. Then they started explaining to me the things that they do with peppers and that what their you know, traits that they would be selecting for, what's easy to process in the kitchen with less waste and cooking evenly. It made her realize that as an agronomist, she wasn't thinking like someone who had culinary or plant breeding experience. It really was based on the appearance. It was like, I wasn't even asking the right questions. It was like asking about textures, asking about sweetness, I was asking about flavor. But then what they were giving me back was really things that had to do with the phenotype and what the breeder was actually selecting for. So at that moment, I was like, oh my God, all these chefs actually need to be in a room with breeders. It gave her an idea, put plant breeders and chefs together. Now we've got the chefs kind of getting it and understanding a little more of our hidden seed world that people don't know anything about, right? And I was like, I really want the consumers to know about this. So the Variety Showcase was born. It's a one-of-a-kind event that brings together plant breeders, seed growers, farmers, chefs, and the public to taste and discuss new and in-development varieties of vegetables, fruits, and grains. It's a vibrant space for collaboration where feedback flows both ways, helping shape the future of food from seed to plate. More than just a tasting event, it's a celebration of flavor, innovation, and the powerful connection between plant breeding and culinary creativity. Like in Portland, where I started this in 2014, I just had the 10 year anniversary in September. Um, there was 800 people there. I mean, it was sold out. I can't, I could probably have 1200 people there, but 800 people came to it. 
people are super excited to like they never have this opportunity to like go to a table they talk to their farmers all the time you go to the farmers market you get this but you don't get that next layer behind that and so like say Jim Myers is there and he has his mild habaneros he's got his popping beans he has something that things that are really unusual that he can explain but also you can present your breeding lines and show the different lines like we had a carrots from Phil Simon who's at USDA in um, Madison Wisconsin and um, he was able to show off these drastically different like phenotypes and also flavors and people can taste them and right there in one evening and Phil has said this to me before he's like in one evening in this four hour period of time I get more interaction and more input onto my breeding work than I will the entire rest of the year. It's become one of the most celebrated events connecting the hidden world of seed development with the very visible world of food culture. I know enough to know, but I'm not a plant breeder. You know, I, have a, I do have two degrees. I've studied agronomy and I studied entomology. I know enough, which allows me, I feel like, to know this is how we need to communicate this and the importance to uh, the public. Because the, but that, like, this is what inspired me is being involved with plant breeders and understanding how absolutely important their role is in our food system um, has inspired me to want to make sure that people in the public understand how important that is. It's just more proof that the key to the future of food might lie in a combination of both chefs and breeders. And that's something worth thinking about.